This tech stuff moves pretty quick. I kind of dropped the ball on this one from putting out a first impressions and really digging into what this little lappy had to offer. I had every intention of circling back for a long-term road test. Then all the drama happened and other products needed reviewing and that wasn't quite fair to a notebook I've genuinely enjoyed using. So let's try to fix some of that. There's obvious news surrounding this company, sort of elephant in the room, if you will, but I'll refrain from using this video as a platform for discussing those political issues. It's just difficult untangling the drama of this label from the actual product in hand, which is kind of a shame. All right, enough of all that, because what we have here is a killer little laptop, and it arrives in a narrow window left to laptop dominance. In using this noble notebook over the last several months, I've been so happy to have a small, light, notebook compared to the last two gaming laptops I used to rock. I used to run with much heavier computers. It's been my first pick for most situations. I'm not shocking anyone or breaking any crazy news there. Traveling with a lighter laptop is easier. Huawei did a terrific job of maximizing the available space. We get a spacious keyboard, a display bordered by tiny bezels, a very large trackpad. Everything is pushed right up to the edge and it makes for great usability. The video, when I first got my hands on it, that initial impression remains. This is a product with a very specific competitor squarely in Huawei's sights. And comparing spec for spec, it's still incredible to use a machine roughly half the price of a competing MacBook Pro 13. The internals are on point, it's just that the overall build isn't quite as refined. The build might not be a deal breaker though. Living with a product is a lot different than just sort of pushing out a review after two weeks. You know, I've regularly been throwing this into a variety of bags and backpacks, use it on set for production. It's taken more than its fair share of bumps, bruises, and one very slow motion panic inducing slide off of a chair, loudly landing onto tile in a coffee shop. The Matebook has more than lived up to my requirements for daily abuse. Maybe the best feature of this hardware, its terrific battery life. At medium brightness, getting over nine hours of video playback was refreshing after coming from a gaming laptop. It really will last a workday, and that quickly changes your behavior. You, know, you stop panicking when you're out of sight of a charger, there's less anxiety when I wanna take it out for an afternoon, I wanna do some writing on it, and I see that the battery's only at 50%. Over that time though, budget considerations of the build have manifested. The frame under the keyboard has always been a touch on the creaky side, but the flex has gotten a little louder over these last couple months. Nothing affecting performance, but a small creak coming from the case under the display and the plastic on this hinge popped open once with a loud crack. I snapped it back in place, everything seems to be fine, but it was definitely disconcerting in that moment. There's a sensitive balance at play between price and repairability. Huawei seems to have delivered an ultra slim, which can still be opened easily for a machine priced well under a MacBook, very price competitive against a Surface laptop. That's actually pretty cool. That could be a nice perk. I mean, look up the repair guides on more premium hardware and that experience could be harrowing. Many portable PCs in this segment seem almost hostile to the user trying to get inside of them. If someone needed to access the battery, clean the fans, or just upgrade the SSD, only 10 screws stand in your way. That's the silver lining, of course. You can't undercut a Surface by hundreds or a MacBook by a thousand dollars without some casing compromises. There are many consumers who will prefer a nicer, nicer build quality, but there are also consumers out there who will appreciate this compromise as a benefit. In the past, these super thin PCs have often been more casual computers, lighter workloads, social networking, but maximizing this hardware means living the dongle life. The Matebook has a pair of USB-C ports and a headphone jack, but what I found frustrating was the separation of features between the two ports. This USB-C can charge the Matebook, but this USB-C is where the video outputs. This interrupts some of my favorite USB docks, which can charge and output over HDMI with one cable. That's a bummer, because this PC has enough power that someone might want to drive it that hard. Again, specs that put it in line with a MacBook Pro 13. That's a happy time. It's sleek systems with solid battery life are no longer throttled with 
economy performance. These aren't netbooks. Yet this PC, which pushes the design and the performance to the edges of its frame, arrives at the beginning of a transition. Lower power laptops and Chromebooks are more than adequate for consumers covering the basics. And a new generation of mobile ARM chipsets, the CPUs found in our phones and tablets, are powerful enough to compete against some of the use that you would want from an Intel-powered portable PC. Apple recently announced they were doubling down on the iPad with iPad OS and new software features to make their Slate a better productivity machine. Even our phones are powerful enough to give nice laptops a run for their money. The Matebook is a handy companion and laid out very well for a variety of tasks. So while I enjoy this form factor and the touch screen, the touch display is terrific to work on, it's not particularly well suited for heavy lifting. So video editing and rendering graphics intense games will obviously bog this system down. In this age, it's less of a fight between this machine and similarly equipped laptops. And it's becoming a fight between low power x86 and mobile ARM chipsets. A brief example, and it's not a completely fair oranges to oranges comparison since we can't use exactly the same software, but taking the same UHD video file, running it through the desktop grade editing software on the Matebook, and then the editing software on my phone and rendering roughly the same quality produces some surprising results. One minute of UHD video took almost 10 minutes to process on the Matebook. My LG G8 was able to render the same short video test at generally the same quality in 64 seconds. We might mock mobile gaming, but a OnePlus 7 or even last year's Razer Phone 2 is capable of 1080p gaming at faster frame rates with more demanding graphics than what this Matebook can handle. At present, the Matebook and other laptops of its ilk remain the more versatile platform. A greater wealth of software, a well familiar ergonomic experience, and including a touchscreen replaces some of the tablet interactions consumers might want. This laptop dominance might not last long. Mobile hardware has gotten shockingly powerful. Mobile software is getting much more robust. We're only lacking some segment defining accessories, portable displays or laptop docks to convert our mobile devices into proper laptop competitors. The traditional laptop has a lot of life left in it. Specifically, the Matebook is a solid solution and a very good value. Just barely edging out the Dell XPS for price. It's a more frugal option than a Surface. It severely undercuts a MacBook while winning a few fights, losing a couple spec battles. If I'm really searching, I'd maybe recommend a newer Asus ZenBook as the next closest competitor. But this was a great buy at its original $1,300 launch price. It's an even better buy, currently $1,100 on Amazon and Newegg. It's just disappointing that Huawei's current political issues are likely going to impact this product line. B&H already listing it as discontinued. Adorama lists Huawei as close out hardware. Retailers are clearing out stock. So it's unknown what support might look like for these systems moving forward, especially long-term care when someone might need replacement parts. I've really enjoyed my time with the Matebook 13. I'm only putting it down rarely for those times where I need the superior horsepower of my Razer laptop, but the battery longevity is a way bigger draw for when I'm considering how I'm gonna get my work done on the go. But because I've gone a while on this laptop, the main question still stands. Would I recommend someone buy one today? I think I would. At least a tech savvy road warrior, someone who's confident doing some light repair work on their own would get a great deal today on a very good laptop. I would not recommend this to the type of consumer who needs that first party genius bar attention for any of their support issues. And who knows, maybe by this time next year, well, I'll be using iPads and Android phones instead of traditional laptops. This tech stuff, moves pretty quick. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these reviews, and for subscribing to this channel. More than just geeking out on a fun laptop at lunch, we want to know how these things perform over time. We want to get the maximum bang for buck. If you would like to help support the production of those conversations, there are links in the description below, or you could consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen right now. It's a fun, growing community of like-minded tech pals and a huge resource for me in creating future videos. I hope you'll check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Instagram and kinda on the Facebooks, and I will catch you all on the next review.